Well, hello, everyone. I'm, it looks like we've got some great turnout. There's a few seats over here. I'm really excited to share with all of you some cool things that we've been doing at Cal Protocol. Um, you won't have to hear too much of a spiel about us at Cal Protocol, um, but we have been building a lot of general purpose tooling that is available in our GitHub and production ready for people to use today. So this is partially a workshop, although we will kind of go through everything for maybe, maybe half the time, and then you'll have an opportunity to try it out for yourself. Um, please take note, you will need a Dune API key in order to actually interact with the, with the workshop material. And if you don't already have one, they are giving them out at the back. Sean in the blue shirt is, uh, is ready to, to give out some API keys. So, title of our talk today, uh, building backend data infrastructure with Dune API. And quick agenda. The first uh, really cool thing is that we already have a Python client ready for, for using the Dune API. You, it's, it's published on PyPy. You can use it today. Uh, we're going to look at a few use cases and existing projects that we use in our um, regular everyday services at, at Cal Protocol specifically a query monitoring alert system and um, something else called Solver Rewards. Um, just a heads up, the Solver Rewards has not yet been ported to the new Dune API, although it will be very soon. And so this is just another example of some existing projects that are live in production and help make our lives easier at Cow Protocol. And finally, step three, we'll have an opportunity to try it out. So let's get right in there. The Python client, there's not that much to say because it is super easy to use. Uh, pip install dune client. And this is just a sample script that you can use to uh, fetch some data from a query that you have already. Uh, you import a query. So it's all fully typed as well. The types are there, query parameters, the dune client, and, and a query struct. Um, give it a query ID. And whatever parameters you want, this is an example of all four different parameter fields, a text field, a number field, a date field, and an enum field. Put whatever values you want. There's nothing super special about this query. Um, you can uh, dune.refresh after you, so after you, the, the, the client itself really just takes the API key, uh, give it a query, refresh. So this is pretty much how easy it is to use to start fetching uh, data or pulling it directly from Dune via the API. Uh, there's a link here to probably the GitHub repo. Uh, all right, so let's look at some use cases and existing projects. A lot of this is focused entirely on automation. I mean, um, building services and cron jobs that you can do that fetch some information from Dune that's relevant to you and, and doing a thing. So Dune Alerts uh, is really just the Dune API integrated with Slack so that you can periodically refresh a parameterized query and uh, determine if there's something unusual you'd like to be alerted about and post an alert to Slack. Um, part of the workshop today is there's still some cute open issues that are fun to do. Uh, this doesn't necessarily need to be a Slack bot. It could be any of email, Telegram, or wherever you'd like to be alerting. In fact, um, it doesn't just need to be alerts about things that are bad. You could set up a query monitor for your own marketing team and making tweets about stuff related to your protocol. For example, we'll probably set up a Dune alert that uh, for when Cal Protocol reaches 100 billion in trading volume so that we just, we don't have to sit around and watch it and wait for it to happen. It will just, it will just automatically post whatever tweet we want when the time comes. Um, second is, is Solver Rewards. This is similar as well, same focus on automation. It's the Dune API in combination with formerly known as the Gnosis Safe, now just Safe, um, plus also this sort of Slack bot and what this does is pulls a whole lot of information from Dune, sort of aggregates it together um, via a script, um, transforms this into what's called a, a transfer file. It's basically setting out, it's an automated payment system. Uh, we reimburse our solvers every week, uh, some ether for gas costs and some cow tokens for rewards based on like their activity um, operating the cow protocol. Um, 
this transfer file is, is proposed all, uh, to, as a transaction to, a, to the team safe account. And, and then you know, the only thing really, it sends some sort of a message saying there is a, a transaction requiring the team's approval. The team follows a link, checks, checks the results, and uh, signs this transaction and executes it. So this is a, more or less a fully automated process at this point. And all with the power of Dune API. Uh, so, uh, Dune Alerts is a general purpose production ready package that can be used today. Any of you can use it, and it's super easy to use. Uh, monitoring on chain activity, detecting malicious behavior, automating data driven tweets. And I think it's pretty important for decentralized protocols such as ours, especially those where. I mean, with, with scalability issues that we see today in Ethereum, we can't really put all of the, the rules of the game directly into the smart contract because it's too gas intensive to verify. A lot of people in the Ethereum, uh, uh, the Ethereum com community has moved more towards sort of DAO-based ruling systems. And so, for example, the solvers on our protocol um, you know, could, could act in a way that is not according to the rules that they are contractually bound to, but the smart contract itself can't do anything about it. So we need to detect these types of malicious behavior and, and be aware of it when it's happening. Be alerted when it's happening. Um, a couple of cool examples here. There's a, a, a cow improvement proposal for fee subsidies. We were, the, the cow DAO had given 60 ETH to subsidize fees for trading on our protocol. And so at some point, we'll need to know once those fees have been exhausted. Using Dune Analytics is a great place to get a really good estimation for like how much of these fees have actually been spent uh, because the calculation is non-trivial. Um, right, and we don't need to look at the rest of those. I think we've pretty much covered that. So just an example of these alerts in production. Uh, Dune alerts, unusual slippage. We detected four cases. Here's a link to the results of this query. Um, another one, this is one that's cool because, you know, alerts are meant to be acted upon. So we have here, missing tokens detected. We've got some, somebody there responding, I'll create a PR for these. Here's a link to the PR, a little heart at the bottom. Uh, crisis averted. Um, there's a few different types for the query monitor, uh, something result threshold. So this is a situation where you don't necessarily want to see any results. And if you do see results from your query, this is an alert worthy situation. So, or you can configure this to be more than N records. In the case of the missing tokens, our configuration parameter is 10. Uh, you have a counter based on any numerical column that's being returned. So uh, this would be similar scenario to the 100 billion in trading volume, et cetera. Um, and we're always looking for other ideas for different types of uh, query monitors. So please feel free to contribute. Uh, and this is how easy it is to use. It doesn't really require anything except Docker, actually. Um, you will create a configuration file, give it a name maybe, missing tokens. That's really the name doesn't matter. It's just for the logs, a query ID, and some sort of a threshold. Um, you'll have a few different uh, environment variables, one of them being the Dune API key, which you definitely will need to use any of the stuff we're talking about today. Um, Slack token, some channel that the Slack, the post is supposed to go in. And then it is as easy as this cryptic stuff down here, Docker run. Uh, what you're doing is you're mounting the configuration volume into the Docker container uh, with your, your query ID and the threshold, uh, providing the, uh, the environment variables like the Dune API key. And you're just running this container that's uh, the Cal protocol Dune alerts container um, with the configuration file that you've mounted as a volume being passed in. Um, cool. So I think we've already kind of talked about solver rewards. We may not, let's, let's not cover that today, just as a note. I mean, this is another automated service that we run that makes, that, that depends very heavily on Dune. In fact, maybe we just take a look at this dashboard for a second. So there are several qu parameterized queries inside of this dashboard. And all of the results, the results that are contained in all of these queries are actually pulled in, in a single, inside of a Python script, fetching all this information and sort of uh, making join or aggregating the information in a way that's maybe a little easier to do in Python than it is in SQL. And also it's a little easier to verify how all the pieces were put together. So they're all independent queries, so we pull we make these API refresh calls uh, with 
whatever parameters. Um, yeah. Anyway, how do we go back to this? Cool. Uh, there's a link there also to the project. This will soon be migrated to the new Dune API. So with that in mind, I'm not sure where we are for time here, but it is demo time. So if you like, if you've got your computer, all of this stuff can be executed today. And we've got like a nice little, little list of things. Uh, so you can head over to DuneCon Workshop. Uh, that probably could have used a QR code. Oh, wait. But you're, you have to do this from a computer. So. Uh, you'll, the only thing you really need is basic Python knowledge, and, and maybe not even that, especially to run the Dune alerts, um, a Dune API key, and a few things that can be done here. You can create your own alert query. So if you have any Dune query at all that you might want to set up into some sort of automated um, alert system, it's, you can just already start with, with one of your own. Um, you could fetch some data that you've been craving to aggregate and try that. Or, I mean, we're also looking, if you have any new ideas for query monitor types, uh, I'd be happy to add them, or you can add them yourselves. Um, and there's an open issue in the Dune alerts to um, sort of generalize this Slack alert to either Telegram, Twitter, email, uh, or anything you can think of, really, um, because it, all it really needs is a post message. So. I mean, I guess that's the end of the slides. We can head over to the, to the workshop code. Uh, but before that, I just want to let you know that we're definitely also hiring. We're doing pretty cool stuff with Dune Analytics uh, at, uh, at Cal Protocol. And we'd be happy to receive an application. Um, let's take a look at this here. So let me make this a little bigger, maybe like that. So really, all you need to have is some Python. I think this, this is probably a little bit more involved than it needs to be. But this is generally how you would set up any sort of Python project that uses the Dune client. Um, set up a, a virtual environment. In this particular case, you would just install the requirements that are here in the project. This is the Dune client and uh, python.env, which is really just used to load your API key from an env file. And we've got a few demo scripts here. Number one, basic fetch, is the query that you saw a screenshot for right at the very beginning when it was just showing um, the different types of query parameters. We've got uh, something called data modeling. Um, this is just a cute, this is actually a, a cute query that I haven't managed. This. There seems to be a bug in this query. So if you want for the workshop, feel free to help me debug that. Um, I migrated it to the V2 engine recently, and it doesn't seem to agree. But this query, it, if, you, if you're familiar with Balancer V2, you can provide a, a pool contract address and the staking contract that is associated with that pool. You run that query, and you will see uh, all of the accounts that hold staked and unstaked balances uh, in that LP token. So it's kind of cute if, you, if you're interested. There we go. Um, so an example of data modeling really is just um, what, what you get back from the Dune API is a dictionary of, of, of sort of column names and values, a list of dictionaries, which is pretty, pretty good structure. But um, so data modeling, what, I, what we mean by data modeling here is, is sort of having an actual like object that that you can work with in, in Python. So uh, it's, it's a combination of, of the query fetching and sort of constructing real objects out of the results. And finally, we've got two, number three, four, and five, are, and six are all different uh, configuration files for the alert system. So uh, you can see. I think there's an example of everything. So this one is a volume. Uh, it's an amount threshold. So you specify a column name and an amount for which if the value returned is ever less than this, uh, you would alert. Um, there's this one. This is an example of a windowed query. So 
You can run something like this every 24 hours, and it will query for the previous day and uh, like in a time window between start time and end time. Um, and this is just demonstrating how you can pass some, some query parameters into the configuration file. And the should be the, the only one that I think isn't actually here, unfortunately, is a left bounded query, which is um, from a certain period until now. So you have a windowed query for like bounded intervals. You have something that's left bounded from a certain point in time forward, and you have um, yeah a few different few different types of things that you can build your query alerter on. And this is available for anyone to use anytime they'd like. Um, if note that you can run all of these scripts right now, but you may not have a Slack bot configured already. So the nice thing about this is that it will really do everything. It will get right up to the point where it realizes it needs to make alert, and then the program will crash. So you will see everything that you're expecting <laughs> to see. Um, and there's a little link here if you want to create your own Slack bot. And there's this open issue to generalize this, if you like. And if, if you guys don't, I probably will soon. That's about it uh, from what I had planned to talk about. Uh, if there are any questions, comments, concerns, I don't know how much time we've actually got left here. Sorry? Back there. Guy in the blue shirt. Email uh, API at dune.com. Email API at dune.com and request your API key today. <laughs> there you go. Uh, oh, thanks. Yeah, another question. Um, I don't know where. Does it work? Test, test, no. I think you can all hear me. Um, the deployment of the alerts actually does this happen on the does this happen on the uh, Dune side or do you uh, have to um, deploy that container with uh, the stuff inside yourself? Or right. So all of this is stuff that we've done independently of Dune. I think that Dune is now in their documentation referring to this client as like the Python client. Is that true? I'm not sure. Uh, but the Dune alerts is just really, yeah, you would configure your own. The way we do this is uh, in our own Kubernetes, our own um, production servers. Cool. Gotcha, thanks. Yes, right over there. Yep. Right, so within the... Can do you repeat the question to make sure that... Uh, yes, uh, so the question was about the parsing of the response data into a data class, right, in the script, and whether we use something generic or... Uh, well... Right. Yeah, so inside the Dune client itself, the, the type that, that we return is a list of Dune record, and Dune record is just a dictionary string string. So when it comes to any sort of object relational mapping and parsing that response, you can always expect to be getting a dictionary of string string, or JSON really. And I'm, uh, there are probably some libraries out there that make it very easy to deserialize this directly into your data class structure. Uh, I'm, I don't know, I don't generally import too many uh, packages, so I, I usually just parse it myself uh, and write a from dict method for, for each of them. There's definitely something more elaborate you could be doing. Cool. So, um, if there are no more questions, I guess that's about all we have to say today. <laughs>